Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here. So I got a great comment the other day about uh, doing a SharePoint list input and output video. This comment, actually. And um, so it's from Nelson KD. I thought I would uh, thought it would make a good video, so why not? Let's go ahead and, and run through what that looks like. Uh, I don't think I've ever read anything from SharePoint, so it was a, a bit of an exercise for me to go through and do a demo of how that's going to look. So a lot of the ways that I like to teach is to show the end result first and then uh, work our way back through it again. Uh, so I'm just going to dive right into it. I've uh, got a SharePoint list input tool here where I'm just reading from SharePoint. Uh, I'm pulling in a list that contains tasks uh, and then I'm changing the owner of that list, uh, moving the ID field to the top or the beginning of that data set. And then I have to use a block until done tool. And I'm doing that because the input has to be completed before the output is written back. If you don't do that, you'll get an error that says something like uh, the reference is not set to an instance of an object is what the error is gonna say. So I have to wait for that to complete until we can write our data back to SharePoint. One other important uh, troubleshooting step here is that I'm saving the original data that I read in from the SharePoint list out to an Excel spreadsheet. Just in case things don't work out the way that I want them to, I can get that SharePoint list back in its original state. Uh, once I've run that through one time, then I'm just going to disable that tool. I don't want to disable the container. I don't want that data to be overwritten. If I run this multiple times, I want to save the original content. All right, so that's that's how the workflow is going to work. Uh, I got a new workflow started here, so let's go back to the beginning. The connectors palette is where you'll find the SharePoint list input. So we'll take the SharePoint list in. I'm using Office 365 SharePoint Online, so I'll choose that. Now I have to get the URL for my SharePoint site, so I've got Edge open. And that URL is simply the very beginning, the um, HTTPS, your domain, SharePoint.com. So we'll go ahead and take that out and place that in the tool. You'll also have to enter your email address. Uh, you have to, of course, have the uh, read rights, read and write privileges for that particular list. I have to mask some of this for you. Uh, save the connection if you want to be able to pull it down in a list uh, later and then choose the list that you want to access. This was the brand and marketing task list, and I'm gonna pull in all tasks, but I do have options to pull in different views of that particular list, and of course, enter our record limit. So I've got that set up. All right, so we're gonna click off that tool just to set that in stone there, and then we're gonna go back and add a browse tool to the end of this. And I'm just gonna run it one time to make sure I'm getting what I thought I should be getting uh, from that particular SharePoint list and that the input tool is working correctly. So I got data. You'll notice there's some trailing spaces, so we'll have to take care of those. And what I wanna change is this owner. I'm gonna actually change it to myself. So um, first thing I wanna do though is save off this current list in case I royally mess this thing up. So we're going to add an output tool and I'm gonna just drop this data into Excel so I can get it back uh, in case something goes wrong. Uh, and then I'm gonna put all of this into a container and then just disable the container once I have that information saved. All right, so I like to put it in C temp and I have a folder dedicated for this. So I'm just gonna call this brand task list saved and we'll give it today's day, 2020-01-26. All right, um, and we'll just call this saved data and just to have something in there. All right, so that's saved off. Uh, again, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna run this one time and I'm gonna go down and, and just to enter a little tag on here that calls it saved task list. So I know exactly what that's doing. All right, so we'll, we'll uh, run it once just to make sure it's out there. If I go to my uh, temp folder, I can see the list there. Great. We'll go ahead and add this to a container. Call this uh, save data. And then we'll move this out of the way and just disable it. All right. So that's saved. Pretty happy with, with that. Now, 
couple tasks that I have to do here. All right, I mentioned that the the data that's coming in here is uh, it's got trailing spaces after it. So what we'll do is we'll drop in a data cleansing tool and um, we'll just check the task name leading in trailing spaces. So we'll get rid of that. The other thing I wanna do is change the owner. So the owner of this task is no longer gonna be the current person, it's gonna be me. So I'm just gonna put my email address in there. All right, fair enough. I'm gonna get out of that formula and just make sure that it's uh, saved properly. Uh, and now, what's interesting is I put my email address in there. And the reason why I did that is the task list itself, if you go in and you edit one of the actual tasks, and edit the item. Uh, when I look myself up, you'll see that my my information shows up there and my email address is there. Okay, you could put your name in there. I'm just a little bit more comfortable with the actual email address since that's how the platform was designed to work. Okay. Other thing we'll do is I'm just going to look at the uh, look at a select fields here and I'm going to move that ID field up to the top and then uh, you know see that the owner is of the correct data type and and we're good to go there okay um, looking somewhat similar things are in, in a slightly different order uh, than they were before but that's okay it's not a huge deal and uh, we'll go back now and do the last two pieces which is I want to do a block until done. Uh, I can search for that tool and find it here and drag it onto the canvas. If you're not sure where it is, you haven't used it before, it's in the developer palette. Uh, block until done right there. All right, and now we'll go back to connections and do our SharePoint list output. Okay, and here we'll go back and choose Office 365. I've saved the connection previously, so I can uh, choose that saved connection uh, and I'm going to put it in the branded marketing task list. Don't forget that. And then I have four options. Append to an existing list, delete the list, and then append the records. Update the records that are currently on the list, but warn if there are any update failures. Update the records on the list and produce an error if there are any update failures, which means that the whole process will stop at that point. So the difference between these two is, one, I get the failure message, but it continues processing. The second one, I get the error message and it stops. So we're going to update and warn on any failures. Okay, everything's in place. Um, well, one other thing I'm going to do is put this tool, the, out, the output, SharePoint output list tool into a container. And we'll just call this update list. And uh, I'm also, before I get to the block until done, I am going to put a browse after this formula and I'm gonna disable this tool. Now, why am I doing that? I just wanna make sure that everything is working before I enable the output. Again, this is this is a little bit of troubleshooting, a little bit of CYA. I wanna make sure I don't do anything drastic. So let's run that workflow and then look at the output and see that those task names have been fixed, they've been cleaned. The assigned to person is uh, or I'm sorry, the owner has changed from Lauren to me, and um, everything looks good. So now we can go ahead and enable that output, and let's give it a run and see if it updates on the website. All right, it's finished. Let's go check Internet Explorer Edge. We'll refresh the list. And we can see that the owner is now me, and it's no longer Lauren. All right, that's pretty much it on the update portion of it. There could be a few other things that might pop up, or a few other errors. Uh, one thing I've noticed is people using HTTP instead of HTTPS. That could be part of it. Of course, having the right could, could sorry credentials to access the site matters, of course. Uh, so make sure that you have those permissions uh, set there as well.
All right, that is it for this update. I'm happy to hear any comments that people have, any other sorts of content they'd like to see developed. I'm happy to do it. I love the comments about ideas that could generate some other content. So please, please be uh, very open about what you'd be willing to see. And I'll hope you'll join me again. Thanks. Bye-bye.